So Darren, thanks for coming um, for this interview for Revival Magazine today. It's great to have you here in Toronto for the filming of your third movie, Father of Lights, mm -hmm. which is super exciting. So I just want to start off by asking you, what inspired you to make the th three movies starting with Finger of God? Well, uh, the first one, that everything is, every all of them were kind of different. So the first one, uh, the Lord kind of gave me this idea to make a film about, originally it was weird stuff that Christians believe. That was the original idea for, for Finger of God, because I was very skeptical of all this miracle stuff. And um, so I just started, I thought I was making a short film. And so I set out to, to, to make that and um, turned into a big movie. And uh, I, could, I didn't think anybody was going to watch it because it was so weird and it wasn't really super well done because I didn't know what I was doing. But people just wound up watching it, and, and it just spread like wildfire. And uh, I was actually in uh, Istanbul finishing up filming Finger of God when Heidi Baker um, prayed for me, and she had a prophetic word for me where she said the Lord uh, was saying that I had to go into the darkness to show the light. And I didn't know what that meant, but the Lord about a few months later showed me that he wanted me to basically make a film that's showing people that the uh, the spiritual warfare is real, but the only way we can win is through love. And so that's kind of how the first two films uh, were kind of like, in a sense, just God really directing and being very, very clear of what He wanted me to do. For Father of Lights, um, I, I had a sense that that the Lord wanted me to make something about the Father because that's what He was He was starting to teach me, and I just start, I was beginning to realize that so many of my views of the Father were so off and so wrong that I really I really wanted to figure out who he was and what his character was and what his personality is like. So I, these movies are very personal for me. They're, I make them for myself and I'm just I'm happy that other people like them. But really it's about I want I want answers. And so that's how I that's why I go make them. It's an incredible journey. It's like it, it, you you really take people with you throughout them from from the beginning, and I guess that's why it's touched so many people. Like starting in yeah. a place where you might have where you started um, feeling cynical about miracles and stuff. To yeah, I found that you know honesty goes a long way, mm -hmm. and um, you know I've seen enough, especially in the church, where the the church is sometimes afraid to be really honest. Like we want to like present things, like everything's good, everybody's happy, there's no problems here, come join our club, you know, and, and in reality it's like we're all messed up and we all have doubts and we all have issues and it's like, so when I make these films I really want to just be honest with you and especially with Finger, I, I found that's the thing that most people really respond to is like there's just an honesty there that even though I'm dealing with really strange things, I'm not trying to like make them look better than they are. I'm just, this is what I saw. I don't know what it is either. You know, you decide if you believe or not. Mm -hmm. So honesty's helped. <laughs> yeah, the, the lack of hype is something yeah. that's quite, yeah. Yeah, if it's not real, I always tell people, if it's not real, I'm not interested. It's not 100% real. So God doesn't need to be hyped, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like we kind of do him a disservice when we think we have to make him look and sound better because it's like he's already the most amazing thing in the universe. So. Um, now, you've released three movies uh, in pretty much five years, mm -hmm. and I've noticed on, on the credits you seem to have an incredibly small team. Yes. I noticed on Furious Love there were five people in the opening credits. Yeah. How, how do you do it? Yeah, actually my, my full-time team is three people. So wow. um, we basically make these movies with three people. and. Um, when you're making a documentary, it just doesn't, you don't need that much. You don't need that many people. So like when we go out, my crew, it's me and two other guys, and we have three cameras rolling, and away we go. And then we get back in the studio for post-production, and I put the movies together, and then my two other guys make them look and sound really good. And so we just all kind of have our role, and that's, it's worked. It's worked so far. So it just doesn't, it doesn't take that much. It's not like a narrative film where you need a massive team. We're pretty run and gun, so. That's cool. Yeah. I bet you guys are pretty close working together. Yeah, yeah, we've become like brothers. Um, and, you know, honestly, too, with w the types of things that we're filming now, I mean, we need to be small. I don't want to draw a lot of attention to myself, the places that we're going. You want to kind of just be hidden. 
you, you film a lot of incredible situations, mm -hmm. incredible people with crazy stories. Mm -hmm. uh, have many people told you the stories of impact on them and maybe yeah. could you share with me one that really stuck with you? Gosh, um, I bet you, you get so many of people just, they say like, everybody's just like, my life has been transformed. The one that hit me on this tour, um, some guy came up to me, it was after the, after the showing, and he had this little like ticket stub that he wanted me to sign. And like not a DVD or anything like that. And I was just like, oh God, I'd be happy to sign it. So I signed it for him and he's walking away and the woman came up to me. She says, you see that guy right there? He's a Christian today because of your movies. Wow. And you know, you hear stuff and I make these movies and I'm in such, like I'm, I'm so isolated. Like it's me in like a little cave, like making these things. And then we release them and, and you see the sales numbers and so it tells you there's a lot of people watching them. But like you don't really get to connect with people. But to be able to meet that guy, so I called him back and I wanted to talk to him. But um, just to be able to see like literally that guy's gonna be in heaven because of a movie that I made. Like that, that was it. That was the whole, the whole tour. I was like, this is worth the whole thing just to meet this guy. So, you know, th that's the best one. I mean, but you hear stuff all the time of people getting healed and churches getting transformed and rocked and stuff. And it's just, um, it's amazing, but it's hard to, it's honestly, it's really hard for me to process. Mm -hmm. Like, I just make movies and, you know, I, I, I don't, I, it's really hard. It's hard to, I try not to let it affect me too much. I just push it all back to the Father, so. I've heard you say about you feeling like it's what you're made to do. Can mm -hmm. you just tell me a bit about that? Yeah, uh, well, particularly Father of Lights. That's, I, I'm convinced that's the reason the Lord put me on the, on the planet. You know, that and, and to, for my kids. So, but as far as like creatively, Father of Lights was, is like, I'm not gonna say it's the pinnacle, but it was the, it's the reason. Um, and I think the first two films were, desi were, were designed to get me to the place where I could capture the Father's heart in the way that he wanted me to capture it and with the excellence that he wanted me to capture it with. So, um, and honestly, what I've always told people is that God's love is free, but his trust needs to be earned. It's like any relationship, you know, nobody, I don't, like I don't even know you, like I'm not gonna trust you. Like with, with like with my life or anything, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like if I were to get to know you over four or five years and we were to become friends, like I would trust you with a lot more than I would trust with you right now. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing is true with the Father, um, is that he loves everybody and nothing can change it. But like to earn his trust, there just has, there has to be, there has to be a friendship that's built and there has to be like a series of, of like, of, of trust on both sides of, of that kind of growing. And so I feel like with Father of Lights, it's, it's, it, that trust kind of came to full fruition where he fully trusts me now and he just gave me the most amazing things to film. Whereas if you watch Finger of God, it's a lot of like stories. And I didn't actually, I wasn't able to film a lot of stuff actually happening before your eyes. But then you see the progression of the films and he just gave me more and more throughout. So a lot of it was that, it's just of, of building that trust. And so that's why I'm really excited about the movies that are coming, is I get, to, I get to make them as a friend of God as opposed to like a servant or whatever. That's cool. Yeah. Um, you talked about amazing situations. One thing that stuck out from the movie is you went to visit a w witch doctor. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty radical situation. Mm -hmm. I felt pretty nervous watching it. Like, <laughs> how was it for you? It was terrifying. It was the scariest thing I've ever been involved with, seen, I mean, I've seen some scary movies. Nothing compares to what how scared I was. I couldn't sleep the night before. Uh, went with a guy named Ravi, who's a good friend of mine. Um, really unique guy. Here's the audible voice of God every day. And the Lord just gave him, all he gave him was at this guy's address. And he knew that, that it was this witch doctor. He's the most powerful witch doctor in southern India. And he was on like the national news two months before because he had cursed this this missionary couple and kill them with a curse. And um, so I was so scared because Ravi was scared. And Ravi's never afraid. And so it was just, it was, it was very, very terrifying not knowing if I was ever gonna see my kids. Because we're in the middle of nowhere. Like, we could have been killed and nobody would ever find us. Like, that's how far out in the boonies we were in India. So it was terrifying, but uh, it became pretty quick that God was in control.
<laughs> what do we got there? With that scene, with the witch doctor scene, and then there's the 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 action at the end um, when you're in Israel. It's really incredible. But mm -hmm. obviously, when you're going to film, you don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's it like taking such big risks? You know, paying for flights, mm -hmm. taking your film crew, and then just waiting. Like, how do you feel in those situations? Yeah, I mean. We, I, I did a few things making the first three movies that would ensure that we would at least capture something. So that's why typically we would go somewhere and we'd be hooking up with a ministry that's already active. And so I knew that I would at least get something. And then what would happen is we'd then go hit the streets or we'd go do other things and hopefully God would, would do something on camera. And of course he always did. But um, yeah, it, a lot of it, you know, Israel was the first one that we went to that I've ever gone to where I bought plane tickets and we had no idea why we were going. Oh. Um, and you know, the next movie that I make, the whole movie's going to be like that, because I'm a friend with I'm a friend of God now. Like, like I can go and I and, and I've grown in my trust of Him as well. Mm -hmm. So I know He's going to show up. And so with Israel is the first one I knew God's going to do something incredible. I didn't know what it was. The other ones I always hoped God would do something. But Israel was the first one where I knew he was going to do something. That's cool. An exciting level of faith to, yeah, to was, see what he's going to do. Yeah, it was. It took six years. <laughs> it yeah. took a long time to get to that point. Yeah. Um, you just mentioned more movies. Mm -hmm. um, are they going to be along the lines of this trilogy, or is that kind of finished? Well, okay. Uh, how I put it this way. This trilogy is done over never another one like it. Mm -hmm. So, um, like this style where it's kind of me just hey, and then I found myself in Israel, and I did this, and I did that. Like, that's done, because this, this journey has is, is come to a close. And if you've seen Father of Lights, you know, you, you, when you see the ending, like, there's not really anywhere else for it to go. Like, it ends with, like, discovering the Father, an embrace from the Father. And that's kind of the end of it all and the beginning of it all. So now what's, the, what's coming next is going to be very different. It'll be a new journey, but it'll be a different style, different, different way of filming, different way of presenting. Um, so, I take it you want me to tell you what I'm doing next. That's what you're Any hinting like at here. Any ideas? Uh, I can tell you what the, what the movie will be about. Um, it's going to be about the person of the Holy Spirit. Will be the next one. And uh, but specifically, what the Lord has sh has shown me to, for this one is He wants me to go to the major religions of the world and introduce them to the Holy Spirit and see what happens. Wow! So that's what we're going to do. So and what happens, I have no idea. But When do you start filming for that? We'll start filming that uh, next summer. Okay. So I have to, as soon as this tour is over, I'll start dreaming that one up. Wow, exciting. Yeah, I, I look can't forward wait. to seeing the result. I can't wait. <laughs> I just have one more question yeah. to finish up with. Um, in, your, in the second movie, Furious Love, mm -hmm. um, something that really struck me that you said is that knowledge means responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel... A big responsibility after all that you've seen with your filming and and along with that what do you think is the responsibility for those people that have seen your films hmm. yeah well I'll tell you I'll answer it with kind of explaining where I was before I started making them. part of the reason I was a skeptic before I started making finger was because I understood that if it's true then everything changes like then something is expected of me and my life has to change, and like how I respond to people has to change. And I didn't want it to change, because it terrified me. And so I would hide behind intellect, and you know, I'd say I'm, you know, I'm smarter than everybody else, or I don't need this, or they're all faking it, or whatever. And um, it just, so, but, but realizing that it's true, realizing that he's moving, and that he wants a relationship with you, and that you're called to love people, um, there's a responsibility that comes with understanding that he's moving and you can't pray for people the same way and you can't not take risks like you used to and so you know I guess uh, do I do I feel a sense of responsibility I mean certainly I mean especially with the movies being successful like there's a there's a responsibility to kind of like make sure especially when I'm making the movies I want to make sure that they're you know extreme that they're very grounded and biblically and that I, I agree with everything that's being said in them but then more than that it's just you know the movies are are movies like ultimately they're just they're just movies um, what I'm called is to love people and everybody who sees the movies hopefully it ignites something in them to love others 
And that's really what it boils down to. I mean, Jesus even said, like, love God, love other people. Pretty much it. You can Everything else can just go away. That's all you need. Yeah. Oh, Darren, it's been great talking to you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.